this next video, I'm going to show you guys um, some of the, uh, the the finer points of WooCommerce, such as reporting and orders and how all that stuff works. So, um, if you go over to the left sidebar and you hover over WooCommerce and then select orders, this will take you to the order screen where it shows all the orders that have been placed in your system. So, I've put one dummy order in there, um, and you can see uh, the order number. And once we click into it, you'll be able to see the um, the order details as what products are in there, how the, how I paid, etc. Um, we can see the total. Actually, we can see that I paid right here via check payment. Um, but um, on this screen, uh, there'll be a couple of actions over here. Uh, right now, we can see that this order is on hold, which means that since I didn't actually pay with a credit card, you should wait until you receive payment from me until you process the order. There's a couple of different um, statuses for orders. There's pending and there's processing, which are the ones that you'll see most, most often. Um, then there's on hold and canceled, um, refunded, etc. So if an order is pending, it means that uh, payment has been received, but you need to check. Essentially, it, needs to, it means you need to check and make sure. I'm sorry. I think I said that wrong. Pending means that an order has been placed, but you haven't necessarily received the funds through your card yet or through the, through the, through the card holder yet. So if, you, um, if they've paid on your website, but uh, your merchant processor is still waiting to confirm that you indeed have that money to send you um, a notification back to the website that, it's, uh, that you actually have received that money, it'll say pending. If um, an order status says processing, it means that you have in fact received that money. Uh, your merchant processor has sent the data back to, your, to our website saying that, it'll, uh, that, that it's received the funds and you should go ahead and fulfill the order. Um, pending and processing will be automatically updated because it's data received from the merchant processor. So you won't have to worry about changing an order from pending to processing. That will happen automatically. However, when an order is changed to processing, which is what we'll do, um, I'm automatically changing this order to processing. It looks like this. Um, it is up to you to, to tell the website that the order has been completed. Um, the website doesn't know when you've actually put the package in the mail. It doesn't know when you put the product in, into the box and ship the box off. So once you've shipped the product, you can come back in here and change this to action, uh, change this action to complete. Um, you also have the ability, if you had multiple orders that you're filling at the same time, you can select the different ones via checkbox, click mark complete, and then click apply. Um, but we'll look into this order right here and we'll show you the different details that you can see of this order. Um, here are the order details. You can see when it was placed. We can see um, who the customer was. It automatically creates an account for the customer, so you can see a bunch of different information here. You can see the uh, billing address, phone number, email address. Um, I left a special note for my order, as you can see there. Um, and then uh, you can see what I ordered, which includes the SKU, um, the shipping method that I paid with, and a bunch of different other things that are, that are really useful for you. So. Um, if you ever need to resend a notification to the user, so let's say you are integrated with um, a FedEx or UPS shipping method, and they uh, and we have the uh, uh, tracking code in the uh, email that's sent to the user, but for whatever reason the user didn't get it or they accidentally deleted it, you can resend those emails here. So um, you can send the customer invoice, you can send the processing order, all those different notifications. You can select it and then click this little button. It'll send those notifications again. So that's where you'll do it. You can also edit any information here. So if, if they wanted to edit the shipping information, the user calls after they order, say, hey, I sent it to the wrong address. You can click this pencil and you can um, edit the information and then save this order. So that way, whoever fulfills the orders can know that this is the correct shipping information. Um, also with WooCommerce, you'll uh, be able to work with coupons. So coupons are the... Uh, um, the coupon codes that the user can use, so you click add coupon and it takes you to uh, the screen where you set the, uh, the coupon code. The title of the coupon um, is the coupon code, so if it was um, 50 off 50, let's say they, uh, if, just for the sake of argument, what they did is that, or what you did is you have the ability to um, give them 50% off their order if they spend $50. So uh, this is going to be a cart discount and it's going to be a cart percentage discount because it applies to the whole cart, not a specific product. Um, and it's going to be 50% off, but I need to set parameters saying that it only works if they spend at least $50. Um, and this coupon will expire on the 30th. So I need to set the uh, usage restriction. So minimum spending is $50. And let's say, so because we don't want to get ripped off, the maximum spending is $200. So that way they can't get, you know, over $100 off an order. Um, if I wanted to only have it apply to certain products, I can set the products here. If I started typing, it would give me a list of products. I can exclude products, same thing with categories, um, or email addresses. If I wanted to only let people with a, um, an at auburn.edu email address, 
um, use it, I can use, I can do that here. I can also set the usage limit. So this coupon, say this coupon is only limited or can only be used 50 times and also once per user. It's gonna be really important to do the once per user. Um, then once I've got everything that I want, I can click publish and that coupon code would be active on the site. And then uh, the other thing we'll be working with a lot with WooCommerce is the reporting. Um, this reporting can give you a lot of really important information. Um, you can sort by date. So right now we're doing sales by date and I'm looking at the last seven days. So I did that test order, which is why it shot up right here to $25. Um, it'll tell me gross sales, tells me net sales, um, you can see average, how many orders, how many items. Um, and it gives a lot of really cool graphs about how, how many coupons, um, refunds, et cetera. And I can change it to be yearly, monthly, et cetera. Um, and then also we can look at sales by product. So if I want to see what, if a, what specific product is selling the best, so I can do sales by product or sales by what category, what category of products is selling the best. And so I would select the category here and it would show me, it would plot the different points for me. Um, and then you can export these, for, for all of these things, you can export a CSV in the top right. So if you wanted to get an Excel spreadsheet of your sales, um, you can do that here. You can also look at the, um, how specific customers are doing. So if you, um, <clears throat> if we had a specific customer, um, that you wanted to give a reward to, let's say, you know, you, you, you can, you could look and see that this one customer has spent a thousand dollars on your website and you can shoot them um, an email saying, you know, thanks for spending a thousand dollars on our website. Here's a gift card for 50 bucks or whatever it is. Um, there's a lot of, a lot of really, really interesting and important details that you can see on this reporting page.